Hi guys, and welcome to another video. Before we do get into it, I do want to quickly apologise for the uh, the lack of a match review after the West Brom game. I did say uh, the day before that I wouldn't be able to get a review out on the day, but the next day I should have been able to get a review out. But sadly, with my work commitments and schedule, there was just there was no way in hell I could I'd really squeeze uh, a review in, unfortunately. And then by the time I did get a few minutes to be able to make a review, it was... Like three or four days had gone, and uh, you, you already knew what had gone on. I'd be far too late to get a review out, so I do apologise for that. But on the topic of that, of course, it's a it's a massive positive. Of course, I did watch the game, and yes, we were probably fortunate that the West Brom got the uh, the red card. It was definitely a red card. I don't mean we were fortunate in, in that sense. I mean that it obviously helped us. But uh, Ekra's goal was absolutely outstanding, and I think we gave a really professional display against the side that you know were fourth at the time. And it, it, it's the, the main thing for us now is just essentially heading into the end of the season on a positive note. And it, we're heading that way. We're heading that way. It, what seemed like it was all doom and gloom. It is starting to turn somewhat. And any positive we can cling on to from now until the end of the season, we have to take it. Because it's it, we want to go into the summer with fans on side, fans excited for what's to come next season. Uh, for another manager to have a look at this is a good sort of project, if you will. I know not many people like that that word, but it, we want it to look as appealing as possible for the best calibre of manager to come to Sunderland. Of course, regardless of, you know, if it, even if it was just a string of shit results, Sunderland should always be, um, you know, without tooting our own horn or trumpet or whatever you want to call it, uh, Sunderland should always be an appealing football club to come to with its history uh, and its foundations that are in place at the moment. It should always be appealing, but it's always easier when you are on a good run of form, if that makes sense. But but yeah, so it was a really, really nice win against a very, very decent uh, West Brom side away from home as well. You can't you know, take that away from the lads. A fantastic win, regardless of them going down to 10 men. It was a professional display. But getting into the video, it's going to be a typical one of those, a jam song, you ramble, just a couple of things up until... Uh, up until we do get a preview, I will give you a preview on Friday for the game on Saturday, um, but that will come on Friday, as I say. But there's just a couple of little things here and there. So first, of course, last time we did speak, we was uh, we were all excited, of course, with the announcement of Hummel. Um, there was a lot of rumours about what was to come uh, in terms of what kits we were going to get. There were some people online hinting that we were going to get uh, a different mixture of badges with our new kits. Now, I'm not too sure whether that's actually... Because uh, I thought, the way that I interpreted it online with our new kits being the home, away and a third kit with Hummel for, for next season, the way I interpreted certain things online was we're going to get the, the more modern badge, a previous badge and an even more uh, retro badge as well. I'm not too sure whether that still is the case or whether that was just hinting at the limited edition uh, kits that were put out over the course of the weekend or I think it may have been Monday when the, the Hummel jacket was released. Um, and as well as a previous away top, it was a yellow Hummel top. Um, but, you know, it was just absolutely typical. It was in pure Sunderland, typical fashion, that in line with announcing these kits, they also said that, you know, in line with the announcement of uh, us teaming up with Hummel, that we're going to have our uh, our retail side is getting a big boost. It, it's getting a, an improvement, an upgrade. And uh, they announced at 10 o'clock, right, okay, this is when the kits, this one, the, the, the limited edition jackets is going to wear, they're going to go on sale, only limited edition, there's only X amount available, and literally as soon as it hit 10 o'clock, the website was down. Only a handful of people got in, the website just crashed to pieces, I couldn't get in for the life of me, a lot of people like me were very disappointed, they couldn't get through, and then by the time we did get through, there was just, there was just nothing left, there was nothing left, which brings me to my point, which was that, of course, the title of the video as well, Scalpers. And honestly, scalpers for me are just worst of the worst. And what do I mean by that? People who, particularly things that are limited edition, um, they just wait, or sometimes they have bots to get in quick enough. Sometimes they literally just do get them themselves. And you buy them as quick as possible, then immediately stick them on eBay for sometimes 300%. Uh, you know, they hike up the price 300% just to make a profit. I mean, what's the point? It just takes away the fucking fun of it. Do you know what I mean? For me, they're just absolute knobheads. And it does it does knock me sick. <coughs> I know it, it might just seem like I'm, I'm bigging it up or uh, making a big deal out of uh, nothing here, but it really does make me sick when you've got, you know, the, the club announced this thing. There's been so much negativity around the club throughout the season, and rightly so. This is a massive positive. So many people want to rightfully get hold of this part of that, this bit of memorabilia to sort of ignite the new, uh, the new, uh, the new partnership with Hummel. It's a really good thing to get hold of, and all some people can think about is 
How can I make money out of this? How can I take advantage of this situation? And some people, like collectors, they, they will be desperate to get hold of this and they will pay the amount that people are hiking the price out of because they're desperate for shit like this. And I'm not paying the amount that, and I know a lot of people will be saying, I'm not going to pay the amount that some people put them on eBay for. It's absolutely mental what they're doing. I'm sure you would have seen by the, the thumbnail. I'll put the picture up on screen now. There's a few more as well. Of course, we, the yellow away kit, which I think was getting sold for, well, I think it was 40, 50, quid people are selling it for 120 but the hummel jacket is going for as much as 250 quid on ebay now which i just it's just fucking it's mental it really is mental do you know what i mean it's just awful why would people i know i, can, I say why would people want to do it it's obvious they want to make a bit of money i get that but it's just they're just knobbed it's the same with so many other things in life of course i, I don't know whether you guys know about you know that like pokemon cards and stuff like that there was a huge thing going through the news over the last couple of years that people would just scout Pokemon cards. So then kids couldn't even get older and there was adults that were getting there first and then selling these boxes of Pokemon cards that were like limited edition for like 10 times the price. So people are buying because they want to get the kids the best of what they want. Do you know what I mean? It's just people like that. I just think they're absolute fucking rats. Do you know what I mean? I really do. Um, you know, and not only because I'm annoyed that I missed out on it, but a lot of other people did as well. They were gutted. You know, if you got there first, then fair enough, and you're, and you're using it for either collection or to wear it, whatever, fair enough. It is what it is, but to stick it on eBay, you're just a rat. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. But what do you guys think about that anyway? I know it's a random one, but it's just one of those for me. I just, I hate shit like this. I really do when there's people out there who genuinely wanted that. And, and, and not only did they get beat by it, which is just annoying, it is what it is, nature of the game. But then to stick it on eBay, it's just, it's a, it's a kick in the bollocks, isn't it? And I just think... Why can't people just be better? Do you know what I mean? But um, but yeah, so that was just that. That was one thing I wanted to just discuss. Um, also, a handful of rumours. Again, it is just rumours. And again, it's just the, the rumour mill now of, of managers. And rather than me necessarily discussing it, I'd like to see what you guys think because... I've seen a lot in the in social media over the last few days in terms of who, who we're going to appoint. A lot of people are screaming for Steve Cooper, which I wouldn't mind Steve Cooper. Of course, I would like Steve Cooper. But I haven't really seen many rumours around that. I think that's just a lot of fans' preferences. It's genuinely and generally been a battle at the moment between Will Still and, um, and Heckingbottom. Again, for me, I've always said I like Will Still. For me, Will Still is the most exciting option of the two between Heckingbottom and Still. I find that more exciting. However, I do get this vibe off a Heckingbottom appointment of sort of safety, very similar, and I've said it in the previous video, very similar to like when we did appoint Tony Mowbray. It didn't necessarily get me off my feet. I wasn't necessarily excited. However, we knew it was safe hands. I didn't feel like there was any fear of going backwards on, under Mowbray, or at least in, in terms of like going down. I didn't feel like that at all. Heckingbottom, he also has had promotions before from uh, you know with different clubs so i wouldn't mind either of them i wouldn't be exactly pissed off if i had still i wouldn't be pissed off if i got heck about i wouldn't but there has been a, a, another name that has been thrown in very recently danny roll of chef wednesday um a, another one who exciting to a degree i think it would probably suit our model again it's another one of those words it's a bit of a trigger word he definitely would suit it and i think it could work well i would be very excited i don't think it's going to happen but that's another one that would probably excite me. Uh, but it's weird because it's one of these. I get excited with a Will Still appointment. With a Danny Roll, I get excited. But there's a level of risk. And I know there's a risk with everyone. But with Heckingbottom, for some reason, I don't feel a level of risk at all. And I don't know whether that's just me. But anyway, again, it's just me speculating. And we're just rambling at this point. I thought I'd just give you a bit of something up until the match preview for the weekend. Um, because I know I haven't been able to... Uh, get in front of the camera and have a chat with you guys. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of something. Uh, what do you guys think about the scalping, about the game at the weekend against West Brom? What did you think? Equus goal, by the way, was absolutely outstanding. Absolutely fucking brilliant goal. And uh, what do you think about the rumours regarding potential uh, uh, new management appointments anyway? But uh, if you enjoyed, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care and stay jammy.